Oh, I love seeing where everyone's from. Okay, I think I think it's safe to say we can get started. So fashion struggle with size inclusivity spans decades. For far too long, women who don't quote unquote fit into standard sizes have struggled with walking into a store or shopping online, finding something A that fits and B you're excited to wear. That problem is still very much a reality for all women and brands like QVC are paving the way and setting an example for how retailers should address size inclusivity. Our mission is simple, make all apparel available to all women. We want our customers to love shopping. It should be fun, it should be engaging, and most importantly, inclusive. QVC wants you to feel represented and celebrated. We've been advocating for size inclusivity now for three decades, so it's a big deal here. To dive into the discussion today about fit, I'm excited to be joined by these three powerhouses who also believe that everyone deserves a great shopping experience, no matter their shape or size. Before we kick it off, um, I'd love for the panelists to introduce, each, introduce yourselves, give us a 30 second, who you are, what you do, and what's your title. Um, so I'll kick it off, I'm Lauren. Um, I've been in the fashion industry now for 15 years as a tech designer. Um, throughout my time in the industry, I fit on all shapes and sizes, Missy Plus, Petite, Tall, and even Maternity. So I love the challenge of creating the perfect fit for all shapes and sizes, and I love being the advocate in the fit room for all the shapes and sizes. And um, just a fun fact about me, throughout my um, career, I've been a range of sizes from size eight to 10 to 12. So pregnancy, and then now for the last five years, I've been plus size. So I know what it's like to be straight size and now come into the plus world and it's not the same and we deserve better. So I'm just really hoping to um, help improve that and with my job behind the scenes as a fit expert. So let's hear from Renee. Well, hi there. My name is Renee Greenstein, and I'm a designer of clothing and jewelry, and I've always been size inclusive. That was my main mantra to be at QVC. Awesome. Tanisha? <clears throat> hi, my name is Tanisha Owasti, and I'm the founder of girlwithcurves.com, which is a style and lifestyle website, as well as Girl With Curves Collection, and my mission really in life is to empower confidence through fashion that makes women look and feel amazing at any size. Awesome. And Kim. Hey y'all, I'm Kim Gravel. Um, I have a, a lot of experience. That's just how old I am, number one. And two, uh, I have two brands at QVC. I have Belle Beauty and Belle by Kim Gravel, but my um, background in fit was uh, I've been sewing and making and pattern making my entire life. I learned from my 93 year old mentor. She's 93 now, still making I clothes. Wow. I made my swimsuit for Miss America. So if you can sew lycra and fit lycra, you can fit anything. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I second that. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay, let's get into it. Um, Tanisha. Let's start with you. You were a content creator before you stepped into your role as a designer. What compelled you to make the shift and what has been your biggest learning curve? Yeah, gosh, I think what really, I guess like my passion for fashion and design really stems from like literally a lifelong challenge to dress my body because I am very curvy. Um, growing up, I was always like the tallest girl in the room, the biggest, the curviest girl in the room. So, you know, while a lot of my friends in elementary and junior high were shopping like the little girl section, the junior section, I was stuck having to shop Missy, which wasn't an option because of course, you know, I'm a kid who wants to wear like clothes for women when I was that young. So I was like stealing clothes. Um, from my aunt's closet, who at the time I grew up with more as like a big sister. So it was tons of calls um, that my parents were getting calls from home, getting in trouble, like wearing biker pants and platform sandals and literally like second grade, 
you know, while <laughs> all the other girls were wearing like their frilly dresses and Mary Jane's, that stuff just didn't fit me. I was bigger, I was taller. Um, so yeah, just a lifelong challenge to dress my body, lots of stretch fabrics, uh, vintage shopping, thrift shopping, lots of flea markets with my dad growing up. Um, lots of belting in my 20s. I like to call it the art of belting. Um, if you have a hip to waist ratio like mine, which is about a 20 inch difference, um, you know that belts can be your best friend when a garment doesn't fit right. Um, so yeah, I think that's where it stems from. And I really think um, the biggest obstacle has been just, you know, not only learning the process um, step by step in design, because as all of you ladies know, there's so many things that are happening behind the scenes, so many things that have to go into a garment, um, you know, from the idea or the concept to actually having a garment that you could put on someone's body. So just learning that process, having to manage it, it can get really overwhelming, um, but it's certainly incredibly rewarding when you see the outcome and you see how something as simple as like a great little black dress can make a woman feel so confident. You know, when her confidence is radiating from with, within, that's what it's about for me. Mm -hmm. That's what a great fit does. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, so Tanisha, as a style influencer, you worked with a number of straight size and plus size brands. How have these partnerships influenced your collections and the way you approach fit? I think as an influencer, you know, when I have my influencer hat on and I'm working with my, <laughs> when I'm working with brands, I'm always kind of putting them to the test, you know, especially um, when I'm wearing something from a certain brand or retailer, you know, I obviously try it on my body and I'm like, okay, were they thoughtful about fabric um, for people that have a curvier body like mine? You know, is it going to fit over my hips? Is it going to be too tight in the bust? So just constantly putting them to the test, but also, you know, really thinking about, is this a brand that is truly trying to be size inclusive if they're not already? I think that a lot of brands that are, that claim to be size inclusive really aren't, they're not catering to all women of all sizes. Um, and I think that the brands that are size inclusive, that do carry a really wide range of sizes, often don't let the consumer know. So even myself as a consumer, sometimes there's a lot of brands that I have no idea that they carry plus. You know, um, and as someone who's on the cusp of straight and plus, I can wear both because I literally wear about three different sizes between my bust, my waist and my hips. That's important for me to know. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it's just constantly putting those brands to the test. Um, also, just questioning when I'm working with them, you know, are you making the necessary necessary steps to move toward being size inclusive? What are your plans for the future? Um, so yeah, things like that. And definitely constantly taking notes along the way. I share a ton with my audience on Instagram, um, as well as on my, my blog. So I'm always taking notes of things that my audience loves, things that they don't love. Um, and honestly trying to do it better and work that into my designs for Girl with Curves collection. Awesome. Awesome. That's great. And I love how you talk about like fabrics and being conscious of of that because I think that fabrics make a big difference y'all I really do like completely yeah like, fabrics can make or break a fit and that's uh -huh. what I've experienced yeah totally. stretch is our best friend stretch is everything <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and I you know and I I think that and when I say curvy I mean curvy as a shape but I believe curvy. all women have curves right of of uniquely beautiful different shapes and sizes they just come in exactly that different shapes and sizes but i just think that as designers as brands as retailers it's really our responsibility to try to dress as many body types as possible without having to do like a special fit um so yeah i just think fabric is key <laughs> and also just building in certain details into garments you know maybe it's giving her um a little fabric belt a sash maybe it's giving her ruching um in certain places in the tummy area just building in those details so that the garment fits more than the one body type that we've seen so many brands decade after decade cater to it's really mm -hmm. really important yeah i, I love that just i'm sorry go ahead kim no, I just said I agree. I completely agree. Yeah, <laughs> I, I definitely agree because, you know, the one thing that I always say is what Tara Banks says, style, that, you know, everybody, all of us have a little something, something. <laughs> yeah, be a zero or what have you, but curves could be anywhere. 
And, you know, it's learning that and understanding it. You know, when I started as a fit model, I learned it really, really good by understanding yeah. things. So it's great. And, I, and, you know, style has no size. That's something oh. that I feel like I've been saying, I think since like 2012, and I've been doing this almost 10 years now, which is kind of crazy, but it's true. Style has no size. All women have curves. Um, so actually speaking of fit and style and size, Lauren, I had a question for you. So I want to know, um, since you're on the fit team at QVC, and I know you oversee about 125 brands, which is insane and really, really impressive. Um, 125 brands. Um, how do you ensure, you know, since QVC, and I'm not sure if a lot of people tuning in right now know this, but QVC literally has a full size range. And when we say full, we mean full. We're not talking about stopping at a size 20, stopping at a 2X or a 3X. QVC mm -hmm. is a double zero to 5X, which is incredible, or a size 40. Um, so Lauren, how do you ensure, you know, size consistency across the board and all 125 brands making sure that size double zero to 40 is consistent within each brand? Yeah, well, we have a pretty set process here at the queue. Um, so it's all about the customer fit every shape, every size. Not many people in the industry do this, but we have a Missy model and a plus model side by side in the live fittings. So they're right there. We're fitting on them. Plus is never an afterthought. She's just right there. We're, we're fitting on her, getting her feedback, getting the Missy feedback. And then from there, we great, um, we are not grading up from an eight all the way to our 40. That's when things get wonky and the fit mm -hmm. gets terrible. Totally. So each Missy and plus have their own set of grades. So we're really like in the fit room, looking at placement prints, grading up a certain percentage for our plus customer, seeing where it's going to hit her all the way up to the five X. Um, so another layer of this is, um, using our specially developed dress forms. We have a size eight, we have a size 20. Everything we fit in the fit room comes back onto our dress forms. These were created uh, from over like 100,000 uh, different women that were scanned and yeah. that's how we developed our standard. So really looking and ensuring that we're staying true to our standard on these dress forms. And then one extra feature we have here at QVC are fit descriptors. So we have a, a range of, I think, five fit descriptors, and you'll see every style gets assigned a fit descriptor. If you go to qvc.com and type in fit guide, you'll see two little videos of both of our fit models showing you the different fit descriptors. We have fitted, semi-fitted, performance fit, relaxed. So while it's not always about your number size, it's about your fit preference. And taking a look, if you're looking at something online, um, just really looking at that fit descriptor. Are you gonna enjoy a relaxed fit on that style? Do you want that to be fitted? So I love a lot that. of different layers. Yeah. yeah, that's really important. And I think it's also really kind of innovative, especially with online shopping, right? And the fact that now with the pandemic, like everyone's kind of forced to shop online. So yeah, that's, that's really cool. Yeah. And I wanna get... say this too about the fit, Lauren. What I love, and Renee, you can speak to this too, like I love how even in our live programming, every body shape and size, even to petites, is uh -huh. represented. So when you're watching QVC or you're even going, going online seeing the videos of the after the presentations, you're going, oh, that that's my shape. That's you know right. what I'm saying? Awesome. Because you know all shapes are fantastic, but you, you know you want to be able to relate and be able to say, okay, I have a bigger chest, I have bigger right. hips, and you're you're able to see that. That's what's amazing. That's why QVC is so far ahead. Of, of this trend, it's not a trend, it's gonna be a life changing thing of inclusivity, I think. It's because they've been doing it for 30 years. I mean, that's when I look at QVC, I'm like, oh, that's my shape. Don't you think, yeah. Renee? I think that's, I mean, I, we should, you know, we go through the fit process with you, Lauren, all the time. Uh huh. Right. Exactly, yeah. definitely. I mean, Even if you're looking to buy something online and you don't know what yeah. your friend or your, your mom's gonna be, you can kind of gauge from yeah, looking yeah. at the different models. Yeah, I love it. That's what I love yeah. about it. Awesome. So Renee, let's get to you. Uh, your fit philosophy, style is not about size. It's all about attitude. It's so I inspiring. About that. Yes, that's my trademark. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so aligned with us here at QVC. So 
How did your career as a fit model form this philosophy and inspire you to pivot your role into a size inclusive designer? And then what skill sets um, were you able to transfer over? Okay, well, first of all, you know, starting out as a fit model and understanding, I mean, I love that I learned the hard way, like, you know, some of the plus size girls that go, girlfriend, I cannot zip that up in the back. Understand, this is not going to fit me. Did you see my arms? Did you see how I bend? Do you see everything? Because the fit model basically had to understand bending, squatting, seam in seam, length, and et cetera. And taking from there, because when I would get clothes, they weren't made for real bodies, and I got frustrated. So my whole thing was out of frustration that, you know, we're real bodies. It's not a mannequin. It's mm-hmm. not looking at something and, as you said, graded up. Okay, so starting as a fit model, and then when I started my own collection, because it took a lot, you know, I had a catering business, and women would look at me when I'd walk into their home and go, do you eat? (laughs) Do you know how to cook? You know, this whole prejudice of what you're supposed to look like. The stereotype, yeah. Okay, I mean, I'm five, six and a half. I'm an extra, extra small or size two or four. I've been that way. And the only time I gained weight was 40 pounds when I had my baby. So, you know, I understood that. So I had to get the respect mm. and show that I knew what I was doing by explaining to women, this is what it's all about. And when I started designing clothing, I got involved in, I mean, I own my company. I became a partner in a mill, Tanisha, because I develop and produce fabric. Amazing, and wow. I decided, no, nobody's gonna tell me what to do, okay? I want it all to make sure, because I'm all about girl power. Yes. I want, it's, you know, style's not about size, it's about attitude. And when something fits you, it mm. looks good, it makes you feel good. I'm writing a yeah, book exactly. soon called Women With Control, and there's a philosophy on how you can give people clothing and how they'll feel good or how they won't feel good in it. Uh-huh. So it's all a philosophy. It's all, it's a science on what we're talking about. And that was what I wanted to make sure that I could control my fits. I mean, Lauren knows I'm in all fittings. I want to see what's going on. If I don't like it, I'll rip it off and I'll start all over again. Okay. Mm -hmm. Kim, I don't sew, but girlfriend, I can tell you how to sew. (laughs) You can. (laughs) I know that for a fact. I can witness that. Yes, she does. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and if you want it done right, you got to do it yourself. So I love that, Renee, that you said, you know, you you were involved in the process of fabrics at the mill. That's important. That's something I have to learn. And I, yeah, I, it's... You no, know, my pattern key. makers, I'm from the beginning to the end. And let me tell you something. When Love and Nature started playing havoc on my little body, <laughs> and no, anti-havoc, no girlfriend, bring it up. Lift that butt. So it was all about lifting. It was all about putting it all together. I talk yes. about the girls because you know what? We also, you know, like someone said to me, they said, well, Renee, you kind of, okay. I said, but I have no sides. So all of my girls are in the front. Other women have it all the way around the back and everything else. Different shapes and sizes. Yep. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, <laughs> you have to look at the thigh burns, the this, the that. And, you know, I'm the pant maven. And this is when I decided... I was going to give women pants. I I will never wear a shaper. I'm sorry. I don't like it. I don't want to be in one. Honestly, I shouldn't be saying this. I'd rather go commando and not deal with anything. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, girl. I love your honesty. (laughs) (laughs) I love it, yeah. I developed and trademarked my blue tech control system. I'm all about lifting the butt, okay? I'm all about bootylicious, okay? So that's what, I mean, Kim knows this. This is what Uh it's and when you have a passion and you want women to look good, I mean, I could have been in every department store. I've got to be honest with you, okay? And probably could have retired early, but I decided to be with QVC because QVC has been. I yes. started with them as designing and manufacturing before I became on air or anything else, okay? So I understood it all because I love that this company at the time, that, and I've been with them over 20 something years, okay? <laughs> That they went <laughs> wow. to but being a manufacturer girl, friends, okay, it hurts because you're going to take one and a half yards and make it five and a half yards or four and a half yards and charge the same thing. Okay. But I had the love that I wanted to do that. And that's what I love about QVC because they don't charge you extra. Mm-hmm. They don't tell you what you're supposed to be. 
do you know how many times you'd have to go in the apartment store and the plus size was in the back and you maybe had three sizes? It's limited. No, no. It's or non-existent. Money for yeah. that. Or non-existent, online only. Yeah. I get so offended when the price is higher. Right, exactly. Well, the selection is so much smaller too, Renee. I know. I mean, you're not going to have as much selection the either. They, they gave the right. buyer this amount of money. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I, I won't mention names, but I was with some big corporations, okay? <laughs> this amount of money for a plus size. And I go, seriously? Right. That's why I love Lane Bryant. You could go in and have an ice cream cone. <laughs> because they didn't care. Now I'm it's hungry. Now are. I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> have different I show women I said you know you can have it in your belly yeah. you can carry your weight in your backside you can carry I mean I have no body ladies okay if I were to sit down next to you I would disappear because my torso is about this big I'm all legs I'm all legs no torso so I had to learn about that about when a woman has a torso to legs inseam whole thing what have you and I probably was one of the first ones that did tools at QVC because mm -hmm. I believed in that petites regular and tall oh. up to a 3x and now up to a 5x mm -hmm. Renee I need to try the pants that you were talking about you were talking about your special trademark fit I need to I I think I have a couple things on the way to me yes you can yeah, I can't wait to try it <laughs> and that's my passion that's my love this is what I do and I want women of all ages to be able to afford good clothing. Yes, yes. So of course. Like, yeah, that's what it's all about. Hopefully the end of the month, end of the year rather. And you know what? The biggest joy I got was I woke up the other morning screaming because KD French got a pair of my Renee's reversible leggings. And I woke up and she sang the song about me. That's the it one was fantastic. Did. That was so uh -huh. good, Renee. I love that. I mean, uh -huh. that was my, that was the best thing you could ever give me. That there, we didn't pay her. We just gave her a pair of pants and she said, my husband went, OMG. <laughs> oh, that's the best. And she said, Miss Renee, you know to lift the booty. I was like, thank you. Oh, I love that's it. That's all I needed. That's all I needed. That's great. I love how hands on you are throughout the whole process. So, I do too. oh, you know, Lauren. <laughs> oh, I do. <laughs> I love about you because you're so good at what you do. And I respect, you know, it's about respect of all of us, no matter what body type, Tanisha, as you said, with the fabric and everything, what have you. And that's why I decided to become a partner in a mill and do certain things and teach young girls. I don't want anyone to be shamed about who they look like. I want every girl to know the beauty of who she is. Yes, yeah. you have to be, you know, that's why we say when I go on air, this is not photoshopped. This is not the air. <laughs> this is live. <laughs> yes. I love it. So uh, let's, let's get to Kim. So yes. you spent some time in the spotlight. You're one of the most book guests on the Steve Harvey show and you star in the hit weekly docuseries, Kim of Queens on the Lifetime Network. How has your experience in front of the camera helped shape your views on self-esteem and approach as a size inclusive designer? Well, you know, Hollywood can be a rough place to be over a size zero. I'm just gonna be, keep it very, very real with you. So I remember, um, cause I've been a two all the way to a 14 and everything in between. So for me, when I got into the entertainment game a little later in life and got a TV show and started making the rounds in TV, I was not the Hollywood size, okay? Um, I think I was a size 12. And I remember vividly, and I want everybody to listen to me, hear me clearly. I remember going on set, not even thinking about my size until I sat down, the cameras come on, other people were around me, and I thought, oh gosh, I'm the biggest one here. That hit me. I remember that, that day I did that. And I thought for a split second, I had this, this insecurity come all over me. So when, when I tell everybody, I love our empowerment, but you gotta own where you're at. And I just remember being so insecure sitting there thinking to myself, watch this, listen to this. What I have to say is not gonna be as an important because of my size. No. Right? You see what I'm saying, Renee though? I remember thinking that thought and I said to myself, I had to process. It was a process. I remember sitting there going, Ugh. and then something hit me because I had to change my state of mind. So mm -hmm. for me, being in Hollywood and being 
on TV and being a size 12, which is really like a size 22 in Hollywood. Okay, Tanisha, you know what I'm talking about. Yep. It, it's one of those things where I had to shift my thinking. I had to, I had to change my state of mind. So it really became this love and acceptance in my own skin of where I'm at. And I think a lot of us as women, if we can just understand where we're at and be right there in that space, Mm-hmm. and change our perspective and understand to appreciate love value celebrate get a pair of Renee's pants get a pair of my pants get anybody's <laughs> pants and when you look in the mirror you like what you see yes then yes. It, it starts then you start becoming more confident and then if you want to lose weight great if not great but you've mm-hmm. got to change your state of mind size mm-hmm. is a state of mind it's not mm-hmm. just a number it's the way you think about that number Mm -hmm. And so for me in Hollywood and being, having this exposure, I thought, oh, instantly, like you, Tanisha, like you, Renee, and Lauren, you, you experienced this with other designers. We get this platform Mm -hmm. to encourage other women, because let me tell you something. My mom used to always say this, the woman is the neck, bone, tail, bone, (laughs) ankle bone. We just are everything. We hold it all together. We have a power of influence. And so Mm -hmm. if we are not feeling complete and whole in ourselves with how we look. Cause let's face it, that's very important to women. People say, well, you shouldn't care how you look. I don't care what you say. Women, if sometimes if they can't see their beauty on the outside, they can't feel it on the inside. So yeah. we want to be beautiful, mm-hmm. but we got to change the state of mind of what that looks like. Cause it's not just one or two or three sizes. It's, mm-hmm. it's all of us. Yeah. You really got to uh-huh. accept yourself. You yeah, accept yeah, and love, and love yourself. yourself. Yeah. Right where you are. Mm-hmm. It yeah. is what it is. Food already can, <laughs> it yeah. is what it is, and it's oh. fabulous. Uh huh. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So, ladies, uh, the fashion industry has come a long way in extending size ranges, including petite, tall, and plus. But there's still a long way to go, as we all mm-hmm. know. Why do you think the fashion industry is so much more receptive to size inclusivity now? And can you tell us what it was like when you first started and how you've seen it evolve? Ooh, I can jump in and take this one off the bat. Um, I I don't know. I feel like the fashion industry is finally starting to move in the direction to be more inclusive because they're just kind of listening to the demands of the consumer. I think first and foremost, it's a little shocking when you consider that the average size woman in the U.S. alone, she's not even a size 14 anymore. She's more of a size 16, 18. And we're talking average. We're not talking half of the women. We're talking over 60% of women Mm -hmm. in our country being a size 16, 18. Yet when we look at most brands and retailers, they go up to like a size 12, which often is like really an eight or a 10, especially Mm -hmm. if we're talking about high-end luxury. So yeah, I just think that they're finally starting to realize that, listen, not only are you losing money and not catering to her because she can't come and spend her dollars and shop at your store. She can't wear your clothes. Um, We have money too. We want to shop. (laughs) We don't want to just buy like pretty jewelry and bags and makeup. Uh We want clothes too. I just think that they're realizing exactly that, that all women deserve beautiful, amazing clothes. Mm -hmm. We want the clothes. We don't want to you know, just wear sweatpants all day, which was like a really (laughs) common theme. Like when I was growing up and you were a bigger girl um, amongst a lot of my friends, and that was even me for many years, you know, trying to hide my body. Um, And then even when I started my career as a blogger almost 10 years ago, when I first came in, it was not as inclusive. And it was very much about I got a lot of messages, emails, DMs from fellow bloggers who are already on, on the scene at the time saying, well, are you plus size? You know, because I've always identified as a girl with curves. That's always been me from a very young age. And I will say today what I always said back then, what I continue to say is that I'm curvy. I can wear both. I can wear straight. I can wear plus. I simply wear what fits me. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that's just how it should be. I don't think there's a reason to label unless you want to label yourself. Um, But I think it's a beautiful thing that brands and retailers are finally starting to realize that there is more than the one body type that we've been seeing in magazines, on TV and media for like decades and decades, we all exist. And like I said, the average size woman is about a size 16. So it's amazing that retailers are finally starting to dress her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, Tanisha, I agree with you a hundred percent. 
And I believe that, you know, fashion has a long way to go. It's starting. Yes. But there are women out there. I mean, I noticed that for being someone that's very small, I love that I would see a curvy or a plus size woman would get out there and wear something quicker than a smaller woman would. Oh. Okay. No, she would because she would strut her stuff. She would feel confident. I mean, I had a, someone I knew who was a plus size buyer. And this is the God that's honest truth. And she showed me one day her bosses were going to really get upset with her because she brought in, and it was a big store, so I'm trying not to say the name, <laughs> songs for plus size in pink, in blue, in yellow, and black. It sold out in a day because those girls got out there and they strutted themselves and said, thank you, because now they could find, you know, they're sexy too. They're yeah. pretty so what do you think? They don't, they don't, you know, date or have fun or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> or don't get dressed in general. Like it's, yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. I don't know if I've ever wore a thong, but I agree with that. <laughs> I do know if I've ever a thong. <laughs> Thongs are for everyone, Kim. Okay, I'm, I'm, okay that's on my list. That's on my list. <laughs> but that's your business. <laughs> I love it. That's my new TSD, a new thong. That's it, Renee. <laughs> but, you know, and I love what Renee said, and we're laughing and having fun about it, but I think the fashion industry is, is more receptive to this inclusivity, you know, thing that's going on right now, this movement that's happening, because I think other women are supporting other women in it. Yes. I think the beautiful thing is when you see women, um, there is no competition feel anymore it's very um you go girls like I love to hear Renee said you know Renee's size is is beautiful you know a size 20 a size 12 a size 14 that average mm -hmm. size 16 Tanisha that you're talking about it's like women are now saying okay we're locking arms and we're saying let's all do this together and you can't change anything without unity. We have to have that unity as women together. Exactly. And I think that's happening. I think it is this movement. Size two women are going, yeah, where are the 14s? Where are the 18s? I mean, we're supporting one another. And all of us know when all of us women lock arms and do it together, there's nothing we can't change and nothing we can't accomplish. So the fashion industry is having to take notice because we're getting loud. And, and, absolutely. We're, and, and we're there as a and sisterhood. That's what I always say. We have to unite as sisters. And also what I find so interesting, a lot of the conversation that I have on my social channels, my blog is yeah. about the fact that it's not about size because no matter what size you are, a lot of us share the exact same Problems. body issues, yes. whether huh? you're a size zero, a two, a 16, a 20, most women have cellulite. Most women have stretch marks. Right. You know, little girls are maturing. I know. <laughs> at the youngest ages, like younger than ever. So it's so important for us to unite as sisters and to stand together in that fight against, you know, ag against that crazy idealistic yeah, uh, singular view of beauty that yeah. so many of us grew up with. Mm -hmm. I agree. Numbers, Lauren, what do you think about this? Um, so, uh, it's throughout the, <laughs> well, well, <laughs> I'm definitely seeing, um, throughout the industry, a lot more, uh, plus different shape plus size models being called into fits as these new brands are extending their size ranges, even petite models. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to see that, um, they're also fitting on plus and they're not just grading up. They're, they're really getting it. And aside from live fittings, um, there's 3D technology out there now, whereas you're designing a garment, there, there's avatars where they're every shape and size and you can select and to see what to put your designs on. And right. it really helps decide those placement prints. How much more percentage are we grading up for that plus size? Does that seam placement look okay? So really these tools, they're so advanced and I'm just excited to see how much more we can get out of them. Um, so it, it's just really exciting where everything's going right now. Uh, well, um, you know, awesome. that's the beautiful thing about QVC. They're always a step ahead. Yeah. <laughs> so Thanks. I have a question for everyone. Um, in a post COVID world, it's no surprise that e-commerce is on the rise. Online sales grew nearly 50% and some experts are saying this shift is permanent. So what tips and tricks can you ladies share, um, when finding the right fit? when shopping online? 
Well, I'm going to dive into that. that. Okay, sorry. I started out as a fit model, and I would say to women, they have to, and that's the beauty that I love of QVC also, of looking at your size charts and understanding your body. I think women have to be taught what their bodies are. Mm -hmm. okay? A lot of women don't realize that they are short torso, long torso, or like, you know, Kim said, when they can look on air and they might see Jackie yes. or they might see this one or they might see Pam or what have you, that's my body type. You know, do you carry your weight in your front? Do you carry your weight around? Do you carry your weight in your booty? You know, what is it that your body type is and then from there, look and see what clothes fit you. As I always say, when you find a pair of pants that fit your girl, buy them in every color. That's right. It's black and then some, okay? Because you really need to do this because a lot of women, I think during the pandemic had to learn because they had never bought online. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They were always used to going to a store, but now they had to, and once that customer and all of us can relate to this. Once that customer buys something and gets it home and tries it on and looks in her mirror and gets that aha moment, you've got her. Right. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And I'll also say this too, a tape measure can be your best friend. And of I know course. it's a hard, cold fact, but um, I have just done, stripped down to my you know, undies and I've looked in the mirror and I've said, this is what I'm working with, okay? And then I pulled the tape measure out and I yeah. get, okay. I mean, I, I, it, it's the target. I hate to be so like keeping it real, right, Lauren? But yes, know your measurement. Measure, find yeah. how to measure because a lot of times you're measuring the wrong way. A lot of us are wearing the wrong size bras. I mean, a lot of us are wearing the wrong size pants. I mean, it's just, it's like Renee said, when you find your fit, that is really life changing and you have to find it though. So, and, and you can go own somewhere it. and get fitted, but when you do own it, it yourself, own it. And when you do it yourself and you say, okay, this is what I got to work with. And then you go find things that work for your body shape. You will instantly, okay, you don't have to lose 20 pounds or start Weight Watchers or anything. You will instantly feel better. That's how you have an instant confident boost. Exactly. Find that fit. Mm -hmm. Very yeah. good. And be for honest. Me, you you know, uh, sorry. So I was just going to add one um, additional tip. I've been doing probably 99.9% .9 of my shopping online since like right. stores right. came online because shopping in stores was just too hard. Also a little embarrassing and awkward at times, you know, when you're walking into a <laughs> yeah. store, my number one question, because I'm 5'10", so I'm tall, I'm curvy. I have like big feet, tall girl, big feet, proud of it. Um, like in shoe stores, I'm like, what's the biggest shoe size you carry? And they're always like, um, but like, that's always my question. And that was my question about clothes for many years. Like, what's the biggest size you carry instead of coming out and saying, do you have a 14? Do you have my 16 jeans? I'm just, what's the biggest size do you carry? And I think mm -hmm. sometimes like you just have to carry that confidence with you. Um, like you're saying, Kim, and also definitely know your measurements all the time. I always tell my sisters, keep it written on like a little note card next to your computer. So when you're shopping online, you can reference that size chart. But for me, what I like to tell my audience a lot of time is know the measurements that are important. I call it the measurements that matter. And what I mean by that is, for example, if I'm shopping online and I'm buying like a dress that's an A-line silhouette, and typically an A-line means it's going to be fitted in the bodice, maybe in the waist, but then it's going to flare out over the hip. <laughs> so back to measurements that matter with that A-line dress. For me, my bust is a lot bigger than my waist. So I'm going to order that dress according to my bust measurement. And when I tell women that I I've gotten so much feedback and they say it's so, so helpful because size charts can be really overwhelming. And you know, the whole, when you go on a website and they're showing you a figure of a woman and this is how you measure, that's great. And that's helpful. But I feel like this whole measurements that matter with certain garments, mm -hmm. I don't know. I feel like I I'm on that. Something. Yeah. It's certainly something that I want to work into. Um, you know, messaging and size chart and stuff for Girl with Curves collection because it's so helpful. I think it can pre prevent people from having to do a return or like me, sometimes I order two or three or four sizes of something if I love it because I'm afraid it's going to sell out. So mm -hmm. yeah, I think it's important for retailers to give the customer, you know, as many tips and tricks and help um, as they possibly can when of it comes course. to online shopping. Yeah, always go by your biggest measurement and it's not the end of the world if you need to tweak something. Um, being a tech designer, the last thing I feel like doing is sewing. So I'll just put pins in it. Like you don't even need to bring it to a tailor. Just 
spin it up and you're good to go. Yeah. Or for me, a lot of times if, if the neckline is just too low, cause I'm a little modest, I don't want to show cleavage. I just always safety pin, simple and easy. And as you said, belts. Yes. Belts, oh. belts are your, but I feel like belts are any woman's the best friend. Uh-huh. Any woman's best friend. If you want to cinch your waist, if something doesn't fit in that area. Yeah. The elastic Look. one will be your best friend. Yes. <laughs> Yes, yes. <laughs> it looks like we lost Kim. I think her internet connection oh, um, no. dropped out. Maybe she'll join back in. But um, I'd love for the audience to use the Q and A box and drop us some questions. Uh, and in the meantime, while you guys are thinking of some questions, uh, we can do some rapid fire questions between us. So just shout out what what comes to mind when I say the right fit makes me feel. Confident. <laughs> Confident. That, that's what I'm with. Yeah, beautiful. Um, size inclusivity means everyone's included, all shapes, all sizes. Mm-hmm. That we're all real women. Yes. yes. Real. Yes. I agree. It's everyone. Um, so the future of fashion is Ooh, inclusivity across the board. I can't wait to see every brand from mass market affordable to high end luxury carry a full, full size range. That's the dream. (laughs) We are the future and we can teach them where to go because as Kim said also, we are the power. We are telling them what we want. And I want women to also express that. It's not about being on diet or having, you know, a shape or worrying about this and that. It's owning your curves. I say that when I'm one year all the time, own who you are and they're going to see, and they're going to have to come and, you know, give us what we need. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It looks like we have some questions here. Um, All right. So I guess I'll ask both of you this from, from Jane. How did you find your confidence from a young age? Ooh. Renee, do you want to take that one first? Okay. Um, how did I find my confidence at a young age? Um, being not able to blend in when I walk into a room, coming, from, coming to the States and seeing that I was different and owning it and understanding who I was. I love that. Um, for me, it well, it took a very, very, very long time. Um, but basically, I just started to look at myself and my curves from a different perspective. Because for a long time growing up, I was really sad and I was really confused about the fact that I didn't see women who looked like me. So I wanted to be you know, 5'10", 5'11", I have the height, but I wasn't a size zero two, like the girls that I was seeing on the runway, the models, the actresses, um, I wanted to be her. So it took me a very, very long time to accept, you know, who I am, my natural curves and what I look like. Um, But I think like looking at certain celebrities that I admired and asking myself, well, why do I admire her? For instance, like Mariah Carey and her beautiful um, biracial curly hair. I'm multiracial, so I have curls like Mariah. So for years, I was straightening my curly hair and I didn't appreciate my curls. And my parents were like, what are you doing? Like you have these natural curls. I didn't like my curls, but we know when I asked myself, well, what do I love about Mariah? Gosh, she has this gorgeous curly hair. I started embracing mine. What do I love about JLo? She has these amazing curves, this amazing booty that she's known for. And I went, well, I got a booty like that too. So I started appreciating things about myself that I admired about other women and it just clicked. It just clicked. Um, but I will say that you know, every day it's a struggle just because you're body positive and you love yourself and you own it and you're confident does not mean that you wake up feeling amazing about yourself every single day. I always say it's a journey. It takes work. Sometimes it's exhausting. It feels like a full-time job, mm-hmm. but just know that you're not alone. Um, like I was saying earlier, every woman, no matter what size she is, no matter what shape, no matter her height, every woman experiences these body issues. It's just within us. (laughs) It's like this crazy epidemic that I wish would go away, um, that I'm trying to make go away. I have a two-year-old little girl that I'm constantly trying to, you know, tell her not only, oh, you're beautiful, you know, and she plays dress up, but tell her you're so smart. You're so creative. And I think it's just about 
encouraging, you know, those personality traits outside of our looks as well, especially from a young age, because we do um, culturally put so much, you know, importance on a person's appearance. I know that's certainly how I grew up wanting to look a certain way. So yeah, sorry, I went off on a tangent, um, but yeah. it's a topic. I love I your tangent. About. I love it. It's, it's a topic we could talk about forever, right? Um, <laughs> because we all share, like I said, like a lot of the same issues. So you're not alone. Know that you're beautiful and know that you can find your confidence. You'll get there. It's a journey and you'll get there. Of course. So, all right. I have another question from Adrian. I have a pear-shaped body and a belly. I love wide leg and boot cut pants. Are there styles I should avoid? Um, so first of all, don't avoid styles that you love. My mm-hmm. style philosophy is always wear what you love, just rock it with confidence. I would say though, since you're a pair, that means you gotta that means you have a smaller waist than your hip. Always wear your pants high waisted. That's a trick that I always do. People always see me and think, oh, but you have a flat tummy. Honey, my tummy's not flat. I've had two babies. It's an illusion. (laughs) Wear your pants high-waisted, especially if you're a pair and you have a smaller waist. But also, no matter what your body shape is, wearing your pants high-waisted, it's just ultra flattering. It smooths everything out. And yeah, and hopefully you feel amazing. But first and foremost, wear what you love. If you love the wide leg, you love the boot cut, rock it, and do it with confidence. Awesome. So I have another question from Mackenzie. What is one thing you wish you could have told yourself when you were younger and had trouble with sizing? I could talk about it all day. So I'll let one of you (laughs) ladies take it first. (laughs) That like hits my heart. (laughs) I think that, you know, wanting to be six feet tall, but I'm not, I'm five, six and a half. Started out as a fit model, did some runway model because I had the legs so I could camouflage. But to be very honest, and you're going to find out when you read my book, is that I finally am coming out to let people know I always thought I looked at myself as being fat because I had a problem with certain things and I was bulimic and anorexic. Mm. You know, so when I look at girls and when I look at young people and everything, You've got to learn to embrace who you are Mm -hmm. and not look at that magazine or when I would travel as a child to Paris and would have you and look and say, I'm not that. You've got to look at who you are. It's like what you said, Kim, when you said you got on there, you know, and you were in Hollywood when they're like this big and you and you had to embrace who you were. You can't change who you are. Don't try to be a small boned girl when you got big bones, because I don't care how much weight you lose. I'm back. Okay? <laughs> own who you are, own your curves and feel good. So this was a little girl who would look at these girls and I would go like, but, but I have a butt. What am I going to do with this? And I'm fat. And it, it really screwed me up. And that's how I learned. And that's why I'm doing what I do. Awesome. I think we have time for one more question. Um, let's see. Okay. What goes into the decision to make certain outfits in tall or not? Renee, Kim, do any, you want to take this? Um, there was someone on the panel earlier, I forgot her name, who's six foot six. That was on earlier. Alicia, Alicia J. Okay. And when I started making talls, and a lot of people wouldn't buy, I mean, you know, QVC was like, well, fine, Renee. Yeah. I said, listen, you need it. Okay. It's, it's not about chopping or, or adding. It's the, the shape of the body. It's the end seam and everything. And there, are, listen, as Tanisha said, you can wear anything. You just have to have the right proportion. And that's why I started with my pants and tall women can look amazing. They're not tall and skinny. You know, I love when somebody said to me, well, they're tall. No, no, no. Tall women are all different sizes. I don't know why people yeah. feel petites are only this or talls are only that or whatever. We're all different sizes, no matter what height we are. So I really stress on tall because there are women out there that can't find clothes for them and they can wear, they can strut things more than ever. So when you look at women with control, when you look at Belle, when you look at any of these, we look at, because we know and I, especially being a fit model and understood inseam length, the front rise and the back rise and what makes clothes fit a tall woman. 
Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you, ladies. Thank you, everyone who joined. Um, and thank you for watching our fit class. Be sure to tune in to the next live session, a conversation on style with celebrity stylist Michaela. That starts at 8 Eastern or 5 Pacific. Thank you, everyone. It was good Bye. to see you all. Thank ladies. you all. Well, Kim, I'm glad you came back, honey. I was worried about you, girlfriend. <laughs> hey, no, listen, you know, I live in the country, y'all. You know how internet's fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Love you guys. Bye. 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 Bye.